Hello everyone, I'm Hua Qiang Wang from University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. This talk is about Nutshell, a Linux compatible RISC file processor designed by undergraduates. This talk is divided into two parts. In the first part of this talk, I will introduce the design and development procedure of the processor. In the second part, I'm going to talk about the simulation replication framework we used in this project. This framework helped us to design a processor capable of render Linux in four months. Firstly, let's talk about the design of Nutshell, the processor we designed. We call the sock chip Nutshell. Nutshell was developed by five undergraduate students in four months. In this procedure, we use online differential testing framework to speed up development. The processor core was developed in Chisel where peripheral devices were developed in Verilog. We have tapped out the chip using SMIC 110 nanometers technology. The chip supports peripheral devices like SDRAM, SPI Flash, and UART. It is capable of running Linux kernel with use box. On a situation when storage space is big enough, for example, on FPGA or in simulation, Nutshell is able to run Debian, as well as user programs like GCC and Cumul. The pictures on this slide shows the process of running Linux on board. We first use properly put loader to load Linux kernel. After the kernel put it up successfully, we execute several basic commands in shell, then put CPU info on screen. We are not able to run Debian on the test board because of SD controller design flow. Yet we are still able to run Debian on FPGA. As you can see, we are able to use GNU compiler reflections to compile a flow and then execute it on Nutshell. We can also use Qmule to run an x86 program on Nutshell. Nutshell has been open sourced and published on GitHub. If you are interested in it, please do come in and have a try. The processor core we used in Nutshell chip is called the NUT core. NUT core is a single issue in order core writing in Chisel. It supports MSU mode. We use two bit saturation counters for branch prediction. NUT core supports SV39 virtual memory system. We didn't implement Tailink in NUT core, as we have only one processing core. Instead of using Tailink, we used a customized protocol to maintain coherence between L1 instruction cache and L1 data cache. By default, a 32 kilobyte L1 instruction cache and a 32 kilobyte L1 data cache are provided. That core also has an optional 128 kilobyte L2 cache with next line predator. This slide shows the front end development timeline of Nutshell. There were five other graduate students to part in this project, and the development of Nutshell began in September. With the help of our developing infrastructure, it took us only four months to finish the design of Nutshell. Five students focus on pipeline, virtual memory system, cache, SOC, and emulator respectively. The processor development is based on an educational processor called Nuke by Nanjing University. The reason we use Nuke is because it comes together with the verification framework we used, which we will talk about later. By starting, with the by starting the design from Nuke, we do not need to adapt verification framework from scratch. There are three milestones in the development process. We were able to run RT thread, a real-time operating system, on October 21st. Then exec uh, Linux executes normally in simulation on November 21st. Finally, in December, we were able to run Debian in simulation. The chips returned from Foundry in April 2020. It was in the middle of May that we got the first character from zero part. It was also on that day we were able to run Arctic Red on the chip. And in June, we are able to run Linux on the test board. When SDRAM is not used, that shell is able to run at 350 MHz, which is the same as backend timing report. That shell chip is capable of running real-time operation systems like Arctic Red at that frequency. However, design flow causes SDRAM only works well with 50, million, uh, 50 megahertz oscillator, and in that case, the chip can run at 200 megahertz at most. 
Running Linux on chip needs to use SRAM, or Linux is much larger than real-time operation systems. That is to say, we are able to run Linux on nutshell chip at a frequency of 200 megahertz at most. The core mark result for nutshell is 1.49 marks per megahertz. The main bottleneck is the memory access part on that chip is not fully optimized. In the second part of this talk, I'll give a brief introduction about the online differential testing framework we used in professor, professor verification. A traditional simulation test, we first generate commit trace using an emulator or a crude write processor. Then we run simulation and compare register file rectify result with commit trace. Usually, waveform is dumped in this process for debugging. However, pre-generate the right trace will cause several problems. The first problem is massive disk space will be used to storage this, this trace. And if we are going to run Linux in simulation, store these trees will be really costly. Then, secondly, if we use pre-generated trees, we cannot deal with external interrupt and time interrupt, as they will cause the processor's behavior different from pre-generated trees. To solve the problems mentioned above, we use online differential testing in this project. In our simulation verification framework, emulator is dynamically linked into simulation program generated by emulator, which makes the communication between emulator and processor fast enough. When the processor commits an instruction, a compare request will be sent to emulator by processor via debug bus. Then the emulator executes the next step, compare its state with the processor. If their state is different, uh, an error will be raised. The advantages of using online differential testing framework includes, firstly, there is no need to pre-generate trees. As a result, there is also no need to store these trees. Secondly, emulator is dynamically linked into a replication framework that reduces the communication cost. Finally, external interrupt, time interrupt, and peripheral devices related operations are supported in simulation verification. These features make our verification framework flexible enough to run complex operation systems like Debian. Here, I'm going to give an example about using online differential testing to fix a cross-page bug. When cross-page instruction triggers an instruction page fault, risk file specification requires the MEPC and MTBL CSR registers to be set separately. Uh, that is to say, they should be set with different value. Unfortunately, we didn't notice that at first, and here comes the bug. The bug happens while we were compiling a complex program on Debian using GCC. The verification framework caused such a bug after four hours of execution, as shown in the picture on the right side of this slide. Without the testing framework, it would be much harder for us to find such a bug. To sum up, we designed a Linux-compatible processor in four months. In this process, we used differential testing framework to speed up processor verification. And the processor we designed has been open sourced and published on GitHub. This work is part of One Student, One Chip project. The aim of this project is let students graduate with chips designed by themselves. At the end of this talk, I would like to give my thanks to those who have not sure become a real chip. This work is under the guidance of open source chip team of Institute of Computing Technologies, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Thank them for giving us a chance to design a chip in university. Special thanks to Nanjing University for Namio and online differential testing framework. These tools helped us save a lot of time. That is all about today's talk. Thank you for your listening.